it's time to dish with D. That's me. Thank you. Click on this video and making yourself a priority. I am Denise. And guess what this video is all about? The mini dash rice cooker. I don't know. I'm feeling this rice cooker this week. So we're going to do several recipes on this video featuring the mini dash. You're welcome. And dash, call me. Let's collab. <laughs> all right, let's get started. First recipe is oatmeal. I feel like an oatmeal power bowl hot oatmeal power bowl so let's go all right in my mini dash i have half a cup of oats but i'm using a special oat blend today i am using the trader joe's or gluten-free organic rolled oats with asian grains seeds a blend of rolled oats amaranth quinoa chia seeds and ground flax that's what that is half a cup i did do about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon dash of salt and i did a do did do an extra teaspoon of chia seeds. This is something I wanted to put in there. So I'm going to add a cup of water. So it was half a cup of mixture and a cup of water. I'm going to mix it. Grab my lid. And put her on. And let her roll. I'm going to try if see if one cycle is enough. I know reading the book, sometimes certain grains need two cycles. I don't think this one is one of them, but I will. When we come back, we'll let you know. All right, the timer went off on our little mini dash. I say check before we decide it's time to eat. Let's give it a stir. Okay, all our moisture was absorbed. And that's good for step one. Let's see if it's soft, though, because if it's not, we'll have to get another cycle. Let me taste. Let's grab some. It's perfect. So I'm going to add some wetness to this. So I'm I might run it for like a few more se seconds on the next cycle. But let me show you what I'm going to add. All right. I'm going to put a little protein powder in here. I'm just going to put the flavor of cake batter. But you could put, you know, so half a serving of your protein powder. Be half a scoop. Okay. Some egg whites. I hope they don't scramble. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a couple drops of egg whites, maybe a couple tablespoons. And I'm going to put that for another cycle. And third cup of cashew milk. I'm just going to mix. And I just put the mini dash back on for another cycle so this can get absorbed. I got the milk because of the protein powder. I didn't want it to absorb. So we're just gonna let this go. Let me smell. It smells pretty good. <laughs> so we amped up the protein with the powder and the egg white. Might put a little bit more egg white in there because you know, a little bit more. It's about three tablespoons of egg white, or maybe a quarter cup. Get it all combined really well. Throw the back one. I'm going to let it go for a few minutes until everything is absorbed. It might not go through the whole cycle, but I'm going to stay in here close by. Uh, but when it, the liquid is absorbed, we will get ready to eat. There we go. It only went a few minutes on that cycle, and it is nice and creamy. So I'm going to plate it up, and we'll have to see what we're, how we're going to top this bad boy. I'm not sure. A little yogurt, maybe. I don't know. We am feeling this morning, but let's get to it. Here's the fun part. How we top it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do, again, this is up to you. I'm going to do some cinnamon. Now we don't have any sweetener in this. So if you want to add something, you can. I'm actually going to add some pancake syrup or you could do maple syrup and honey, whatever. But I'm just going to do pancake syrup. It's sugar free. A little bit of that. And a little bit of yogurt. Because I did call this a protein oatmeal, didn't I? And it's a nice cold element, which I love the cold and the hot together. But again, you don't like it, you don't have to put it on. I'm just gonna put a nice kind of tables, two tablespoons maybe. Oh. Mm. Yes, I like the spoon. Don't you judge me. <laughs> um, I want crunch. Again, that's a personal preference. I'm going to put some pumpkin seeds, a tablespoon of salted pepitas, zero. So it's not going to add anything. Oh, 
Oh, some crushed hemp. I forgot it. Another good source of those omegas, those proteins, those good for you things. And a teaspoon of this is zero points, so it's not going to add any points, but add a lot of nutrients. Look at that. And look how pretty. I mean, seriously, folks. And I'm also going to a little bit of flax meal that I ground myself. I don't want to put a lot of it, but I just put a little, a little half a teaspoon, just a little, you know, give it a little something, something. So I think that's all I'm going to do on this. But again, you can have at it and serve it how you like. But this is day one of our mini dash breakfast. So points, it is four points for the oats. Everything else I used was zero points amount. The milk, the yogurt, the toppings. So four points for my breakfast this morning, I don't think is bad. And it's a nice hot breakfast. And I amped it up with little egg whites. And some protein. Oh, the protein powder. I might have to count that. It may be a point. I didn't scan the pack because if the serving is one point, then half the serving will be zero. So again, you could adjust to your serving of your protein powder. So again, you could leave it out. You could use liquid protein instead, like a um, Fairlife or a Premier instead of the powder. Again, you do you, boo. And you could put peanut butter would be good on here, but I'm going savory. I'm going cinnamon. I don't really like, well, I guess peanut butter and cinnamon wouldn't be bad, would it? I know what we'll do. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Don't dare go anywhere. How about half a serving of a little shake of some approach, some peanut butter powder? Yeah, I mean, you know, two tablespoons is a serving, so I'm not even going to use barely one, maybe one tablespoon. So I could maybe add up a point for all my toppings or two. But yeah, I'm using this honey roasted that I absolutely adore from the Kate May Peanut Butter Company. You know, I order from them online. They are fantastic. They have honey roasted. They have butterscotch. Oh, I tell you, their powders are so good. They're one point of serving. And I absolutely love them. So this is my breakfast. This is the finished product. I'm going to go enjoy. Breakfast this morning is a hot oatmeal power bowl. I have a half a cup of the Trader Joe's organic rolled oats with ancient grains and seeds. So that half a cup is four points. I cooked it in my little mini dash with water, a little bit of salt and some cinnamon. And then I added some powdered protein, a cake batter flavor, half a serving. Added a little bit of egg whites and a little bit of almond milk, about a third cup. Let it hit another cycle but didn't let it cook fully through just so it got heated through and everything got absorbed then i topped it with some two tablespoons of non-fat cooked yogurt some peanut butter powder half it half a serving pumpkin seeds crushed hemp flax meal little maple syrup again whatever you want to use so for me i'm going to count this as five or six points depending on your toppings again most of them are zero i'm just feeling you know i'll give it a point it up so that's my breakfast this morning a heck of a lot of protein in this, so I can't wait to dig in. All right, next recipe in our mini dash is going to be the giant pancake. Sounds good to me, so let's get started using our mini dash rice cooker to make pancake. In our bowl, we have half a cup of pancake mix. To that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of unsweetened applesauce and half a cup of almond milk or any milk of your choice you choose. We're going to combine well. I'm gonna go grab my dash mini rice cooker. All right, my dash mini rice cooker is plugged in. I did spray it with nonstick spray. Didn't really say to do that, but I figured it couldn't hurt. Just gonna pour all our batter right in the bottom. And I got this right out of the dash mini rice cookers um, manual. It has a few recipes in the back. 
So if you have this appliance, you probably have the rice, the little, the little recipe book. Put your lid on and it says to cook through two cycles. So there's the one and we'll come back and plug her in again. She just popped up. We're gonna pop her down for one more cycle. And I will show you what it looks like so far. You can see it's still wet on top, but the sides look pretty good. But it says one more cycle, so that's what the directions say. That's what we'll do. There's a little bit, a little bit of batter on there. We'll be right back. All right, the second cycle is done. It didn't take as long as the first cycle, but I touched the top and it's dry. So I'm gonna flip it out onto this plate. All right, let's invert our pan cake. Oh, look at that. I mean, isn't this like the cutest thing ever? <laughs> Pancake, it's pretty thick. Top with some fresh fruit, some syrup. I think it's absolutely adorable. And it is cooked through. We'll double check. Yep, it is cooked through. So how fun is that with your mini dash? I love this. Again, one appliance we can do multiple recipes with it and it's something different it's not all about cooking rice we can make a pancake how fun and there you have your pancake in the mini dash waffle maker i threw some strawberries and some sugar-free maple syrup so that is my four point breakfast this morning okay editing d here i keep mentioning in the video you'll see that i keep saying i'm going to screenshot the recipe well it wasn't clear it looked horrible so i took them out so I did type each one under my website, dishwithd.com. Each one is linked down below. So I made it easy for you. It's just easier that way. It just looked, looked you, couldn't be able, you wouldn't have been able to see it. So everything is linked down below. Takes right over to dishwithd.com to have the written recipes for all five of them. All right, let's get back. All right, another day for the Dash Mini Rice Cooker. What are you making today, Dee? <clears throat> Sorry, banana bread. Oh, I can't wait for this. It's going to be my breakfast, so I'm super excited. I will show you the a screenshot of the recipe from everything is from the recipe book. I'm not I am tweaking this one because it makes two and I only want to make one. So I'm just having everything and I'm substituting, you know, sweetener and, and power flour for flour because I'm going to use it up. Um, egg whites for eggs. So I've halved everything. And I'm not using coconut oil because I don't use coconut oil. I am using applesauce. So let's go and make this banana bread. In our bowl, we have one mashed banana. To that, we're going to add, now it says egg, but again, I'm using egg white because I have it. You absolutely could use an egg. Of course, the eggs for the whole thing, so I don't know. I'm just gonna put, do one and a half tablespoons of egg white. Are we winging this shrimp? <laughs> Look at my best work when I wing things, don't I? All right, egg. All right. Now, it says a lot of sugar, but I don't know. I don't I think that's a really, I'm considering the banana is a bit sweet. We're only going to do a couple tablespoons of the monk fruit. Again, use any sugar you want. Use regular sugar. Use honey. Use, you know what? You do you, boo, is what I always like to say. And add some salt. It says half a quarter teaspoon. Let's get that next. I'll grab a spatula. Okay. All right. Ricotta cheese. I know, that's interesting. Uh, two tablespoons. I'm using the fat free because it doesn't bother me. But again, use. Whatever color of gotta cheese you want. No judgment here on the ingredients you use. And we're going to do a little vanilla extract. Uh, you know, I never measure my vanilla extract, but a teaspoon. Let's get our applesauce. I should rinse this out. Play egg product in my applesauce. So one tablespoon of unsweetened applesauce. All right, see where we're at, vanilla salt, baking powder, ha <laughs> ha. We need this bad boy, half a teaspoon.
These are those cool measuring spoons I got on. That site, Timu, I <laughs> remember it. Now this says you could put rum extract in. Oh, I don't know. I'm happy with this, but yeah, rum extract. And flour. I'm doing half a cup. I think that might be every, oh, does it say cinnamon? Does it call for cinnamon in here? Which I thought was odd, but we're gonna throw a dash of cinnamon because I like cinnamon in my bananas. So we're just gonna just dash, dash a little, da little dash will do you, cinnamon. All right, we're gonna combine that well. And we're going to grab our mini dash rice cooker. I know, bread and butter rice cooker. I am. Everything is in, if you have this mini dash, you have this recipe book. And everything is in there. Look at that. How lovely and fluffy is this? Now, they said you could add nuts that are optional. Yeah, I'm honestly not feeling nuts today. But I don't see why I wouldn't add it, though, because I love nuts and banana bread. All right, that's all we're going to do. So let me go grab my mini dash rice cooker. It says cook. It says cook. Pour approximately one cup of mixture into your rice cooker and cook for one cycle. Okay, so I think we might have two here. Spray your mini dash. It doesn't try to do that, but... I don't know. I'm just making sure it don't stick. And we dump all our mixture. This is probably a little over a cup, so it's not worth me worrying about it. All right. Ugh. So we might have to cook for more than one cycle. We'll be able to tell. Spread it out. You could probably sub out the oats for the flour if you wanted. You could use pancake mix, which is what I pretty much did. All right, we put our lid on. We put our lid on if we could find our lid. Oh, it's already over here. <laughs> All right, press down. Let it go for one cycle. And we will come back. We will check it. And we'll see if it needs a little bit more. All right, the one cycle just clicked. Let me see. I, it needs another cycle. I'm going to click it for one more cycle. I want to interrupt this video for an FYI. Now, if it, these directions tell you two cycles in your dash, sometimes the cycles won't work because it's too hot. I'm not sure why they would say two cycles, but what I'm telling you is unplug it, let it cool, or put it in the refrigerator. I took mine outside to cool it down real quick, and then I just hit another cycle. So it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that it's telling you two cycles, but it doesn't work two cycles. You got that for me. I don't work for Dash, but I'm giving you that little hint. Cool it down, it'll do another cycle for you. So, I know. Or you could pop it out and microwave it. It's up to you. But I just, like I said, took it outside. It's freezing out there, so we, in like in two minutes, it cooled down. And I put it back in and threw it for another cycle. So, FYI for me. All right, we went through the two cycles. You got my little memo earlier about sometimes it'll tell you two cycles, but the machine doesn't want to do it. I think because it gets really hot. So, what I do is... Pull it down. So boy, this smells really good. Oh yeah, I I can't tell you how good this smells. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna flip it out. Put it on a plate. We're gonna let me do it on camera. Let's see if we do it on camera. <clears throat> can I do it? Yeah, somebody burned my fingertips right there. You know what? What I don't do for you guys, you know? Burn my fingertips. <laughs> okay, let's burn the rest of them. Look at that. <gasps> oh, you can flip it back over if you want to look more pretty than the other side, like a little cake. Look at that. Kind of reminds me of the pancake. Now, you can lower the points by using cottage cheese, even low-fat cottage cheese. Two tablespoons will not give you any points. But I had the ricotta. That's why I used it. Um, so yeah, you absolutely could use, I would, like I said, if I had cottage cheese, I would have used that, but I had to have regatta just cause I'm an Italian girl. I have regatta in my pantry, but I'm going to serve it with a little bit of maple syrup. This comes out to five points with the four, uh, the, the power flour and the, um, ricotta. Again, you could shave off a point using cottage cheese. Um, you can use any, you can use, you can even use oatmeal. I mean, come on, oats would work out really fabulous. So let's cut into this. So it looks like on the inside. This is more like a 
of an oat cake than an oat bread, honestly. So, it's very moist looking. That's, you want to see me enjoy it, right? Cheers. Hot. Oh. Very banana-y. Interesting. I think it doesn't taste like that much banana because I've made banana bread all the time. This really has a nice banana taste. Maybe it's the flour. Because I usually make my banana bread with oats. But yeah, I mean, it's just something fun to do with the dash. We have this appliance sitting on our shelves, taking up real estate. Let's put it to good use. So I thought doing these would be really, really fun. Now tomorrow, we're doing say the last one. There are so many recipes in here. We're doing a Dutch baby. I know. I'm excited about that one. Look how good it looks. So we're doing a Dutch baby tomorrow. Not sure we'll do one on Friday. I don't know how many we're going, we're going to do from one on Friday or not. We're definitely going to do one tomorrow. I'm going to get my breakfast. Don't think I'll be able to eat all of this, actually. Sometimes, like, we think we could eat something and we realize how filling it is. So I'm going to cut it in half and see how I feel. It's good, though. Another success from the dash. Day four in our quest to use our mini dash rice cooker. What are we making today? Dutch baby. Dutch, Dutch baby. Okay, now this one has, I don't know how many it serves, but it says makes more than one. So we want to just want to make one. So I kind of made some adjustments. I will have these pages screenshot here for you. So, you know, let's go. Girls hungry. In my bowl, I have a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm going to put a little dash of sweetener in there. I don't really think it needs too much because we're going to top it with some confectionery sugar. So a little less than a teaspoon, actually. Dash of salt. Quarter cup of almond milk. Dash of vanilla extract. And one egg. I get everything, flour, <laughs> milk, egg, salt, vanilla. Let's combine. Okay. All those lumps in your flour are out. Now it says in here, because I'm, you know, Trying to cut this back. Spoon approximately half a cup per rice cooker. Um, this is probably just a heaping half cup. I don't feel like I want to make two of them out of this. And it does say to cook on your rice, your cooker for two cycles. Now we all know that cooking on two cycles is a pain in the butt. But like I said, sometimes it won't cook again because it's too hot. So what I suggest is cooling your rice cooker down and then it'll cook again so if you have trouble say oh my god dude the button won't go down it's because it's too hot yeah i'm not sure why that's designed that way because that's what it says to do so we're gonna i like to spray mine all right so i'm going to grab a spatula and let's put our mixture in our rice cooker. Now you top it with um, powdered sugar and lemon. So I can miss why you don't really need a lot of sweetener. Lid on, press down. Remember we go for two cycles and I will be back. Good news, one cycle did the trick. 
I guess maybe for the amount, like I said, I, I did different than the original recipe. I just cut down because I only wanted to make it for one. So that worked out really well. It's perfect. I've never made a Dutch baby before, so I really have no idea what it's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to taste like. Sounds like a pancake. Bite. So let's flip it out. There we go. It's out of the way. Unplug. Put you over here. Put you cool down. And let's flip her over. She's beautiful, isn't she? So now they say to serve it with powdered sugar and lemon juice. So <clears throat> I didn't really want to put powdered monk fruit because I, I honestly don't like the taste of it. I mean, that's okay, but for breakfast, I didn't want that cooling effect. So I just measured out a zero point amount of powdered sugar. Now, one teaspoon is one point. Half a teaspoon is zero. Now, this is only, I calculated to be three points. So I could actually add a full teaspoon and count another point. It'd be totally fair. So if I need more powdered sugar, I'm going to add it. But what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze our lemon on top. Make sure your seeds are out. I want to serve it like it's supposed to be. Okay, lemon. And our, let me dry my fingers off so I can sprinkle it. I want to sprinkle the powdered sugar. I mean, I think a half a teaspoon is a plenty. Look at this, half of it's on my fingers. So you absolutely could, and I say you could afford another point. For four points, that's still a decent deal. But you can use monk fruit and not even worry about it. So let's have a taste. Okay. I need to take a photo first. All right, grab a fork. Dutch, Dutch baby. Do, do, do. I'm thinking ice baby, I don't know. I've never had a Dutch baby, but you know, it's my first Dutch baby. Really looks good. Looks delicious. Now, could you use egg white? I don't know. I'd say no. It's pretty good. I like this. I like this a lot. Winner. So out of four recipes, they all were good. Which one was my favorite? Probably the second day, the pancake. Though this is pretty good. This is up there. I mean, this is, look at that fluffiness. I love, again, the fluffiness and lightness this little rice cooker gives. It's almost like it steams it. So if you have this mini dash rice cooker in your pantry shelf or in your appliance shelf, get it out. Make yourself some breakfast. I'm going to eat. All right, last day in our mini dash extravaganza. This one I'm making up, I'm making it on the fly. So we don't know if it's going to work. I'm making a frittata. My Italian roots, kind of like my mama used to make, you know, but a little bit tweaked. So again, using ingredients I have on hand, this is a great way to clean out your fridge. I do this a lot with recipes. Um, use what you have, don't worry about, oh, I, I, just use what you have, you'd be surprised how fantastic it tastes. So let's go and put our frittata together. In my bowl, I have two whisked eggs. I might be adding some of these egg whites. I'm just going to see. Again, like I said, I'm doing this on the fly, so I'm not sure what I'm going to need, but I want to be able to add it in. So I'm going to put in my mixture, I have 50 grams of shredded potatoes for a point. You could use more, you could use less. And I don't even know how long this is going to bake because, again, we have no idea what we're doing. I have some sun-dried tomatoes because that's what I have in my pantry. I have some onion, as always, and I have some Canadian bacon. We're going to do, I'm going to do three slices. I want to make it meaty. It looks like this might be too much. So let's just do let's one and a half slices. Let's do two. Is, I figure I'm going to count them. I'll use all of it, but, you know, we'll do two slices. That's probably one right there. We'll do two slices. I'm going to be needed to add a little bit more egg, but we'll get, we'll get to that. <clears throat> Some baking powder, about, about a quarter teaspoon, because we don't have that much flour in this. I do want to put some garlic. I know, it's breakfast, but you know, I like a little garlic. About a quarter teaspoon. You don't have to add the garlic if you don't like garlic in the morning. Some cottage cheese. I'm using that fat-free. 
so I don't have to count it. And in this, you really don't know the difference. Two tablespoons of cottage cheese. I do have some, some rowdy looking spinach here that needs to get used up. So let's just tear in a few leaves of spinach. Sorry about the crinkling noise. I'm just trying to get the, the little ends of the spinach off. Because I don't really want the stems in here because, I don't know, it doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing with, with these stems. I guess I could have done that off camera, right? So we're just gonna I just want some flecks of green in there. I just think this, it'll just look nice. <laughs> All right. And it's spinach, you know. Right, Suzanne? It's spinach. So it's good for you. All right, that's enough of that. And I've got flour. A tablespoon of flour. It'll help give it a little body. Add a little bit of those egg whites in there. We'll do, let's measure them because I'll be asked how much egg whites I used. And I was, I don't know. That's one, two tablespoons. I do have some almond milk here that I'm going to utilize as well. Get all this mixed in. Let's get more spatula. That flour incorporated, that cheese. Hmm, eh, don't need to add a lot of milk. I think those egg whites did the trick. Oh, that. Oh. I will put this maybe a tablespoon in there just to make sure. Now, again, this might have to cook for a couple of cycles. We'll figure it out when we do it. And remember what I told you about the cycles. Sometimes the dash maker is really hot and it won't cook. You have to shut it down, cool it down, and then you can do it. All right, let's put some pepper in here. All right. Dash of salt. Okay. And I'm going to top it with hot sauce. Get this over here, fix that out of the way. Get our mini dash. Water in. What I love about this it doesn't have to heat up. It just is. All right, I'm gonna spray the inside again. I don't think you have to, but you know what? We don't we just want to ensure that our frittata is not going to stick. So, dump all this loveliness in there. Every drop of that bacon. I might just use the rest of that candy bacon because I'm already paying for it. So what the heck, right? If I have to pay for it, I'm going to eat it. I'm just going to amp up the protein as well. And some of the top, some look pretty too, actually. This might not be a bad thing because it's all going to be on the top. Now, back in the day when my parents used to make frittatas, we always had it on Palm Sunday. I'm not sure why we had it on Palm Sunday. <laughs> I think it's more of an Easter tradition, but I think because we were everybody was able to get together on Palm Sunday is when we had it. But my dad was the flipper. He used to f take it out, flip it, put it back in. So we may pay homage to dad if we, uh, it was a messy job. So lid on, click down, and we'll see how long she takes. What I'm going to do before I put it on the second cycle is I'm just going to give it a mix. Get some of that rawness. So this doesn't get overcooked. Then we're gonna put it on for a second cycle. Like I told you, you can't hit the second cycle, watch. Oh, see it lies to me. Most, sometimes it pops right back up, I think because it's just too hot. So what I tell you to do is just go and take it, unplug it, 
give it a good cool down and then finish. So we're gonna do this, get this all to spray a little bit. And then we're gonna put on for our next cycle. All right, let's burn my hands and flip it out. That's hot. Okay. There you have your frittata. Let's cut into it. This is a lot. I don't think I'm going to eat all this. It makes, you know, like you wake up hungry and you think, oh, it's a few eggs. It's, you know, even though it's extremely low in points, like this whole entire thing is, let's see, potatoes, one, corn, or Canadian bacon, one, maybe the flour, but for a tablespoon. So at the most, it's three or four points. But, oh my God, that's not a lot for breakfast, but this is just huge. Show you the inside. I wish I had some pepper. Look at that. Light and fluffy. And the flour just binds it and gives a little bit of oomph. So yeah, mom and dad would be proud. Like I said, I would love to have had peppers or sausage in here, but that's not what I had around. I just utilized what I had and I think we need to give her a taste, shall we? Let me take a picture first because I always, well, my pictures are always weird because I've already eaten it. So let me grab a picture and then we'll taste. You know, I was gonna go for a little bit of hot sauce. Just on the corner. Yeah, we always used to use special cheese for a frittata. The name, my mother and my grandfather always called it the basket cheese. But guess what? It comes in a basket and it's called basket cheese. I think they renamed it. Mmm, it's pretty good. I think my parents would be proud. Cheers. So, this was a success. The hardest thing is cooking it in these dash, this dash. For a lot of the recipes we did this week, because it'll say two cycles and it says in the book, two cycles. But when you go to hit it, it's too hot. So what I always do is I unplug it. Kind of wave the element so it cools off real quickly or put it in your freezer for a few minutes and then hit it again. They keep saying two cycles, two cycles, but it doesn't do two cycles. So I'm giving you that heads up. If yours isn't working like D, it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, mine does not do two cycles really quickly. It has to cool down, which is not good when you want to eat because you don't want to like wait for something to cool down. You want to eat your breakfast. Oh, the potatoes. That was the other point. The potatoes. I think I just said the potatoes, the Canadian bacon. The flour, it's really, when you consider what you, the pointed ingredients, the spinach is really good. So I'm going to go enjoy this and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's videos on using the mini dash rice cooker in a few different ways. Because I know a lot of you buy these things and you don't use them. They're sitting on your shelf collecting dust. So this way you could try a few different recipes. Though I will tell you, it makes fantastic rice and oatmeal anyway. That's why I started off with oatmeal. I thought that was easy. But yeah, like if you utilize it for different things and the recipe book, if you have it, has cool like dinner recipes in there too. Like if you're cooking for yourself and if you haven't gotten a mini dash rice cooker and you want to get one, I will have one linked on Amazon for you to go grab. Like I said, it's, it pays for itself. It was, it's just a fantastic purchase. I'm so happy I have it. Again, if you just make rice with it, it makes fantastic rice, white and brown. So definitely a win there. So if you're the person, if you're like me and you make rice on the stove and it never comes out, you need a rice cooker. That's been my salvation between the Instant Pot, this, or I did have it, I used to have before it went bad because I use it all the time, it was a rice cooker. And it was really fantastic. It does make perfect rice every time. Yeah, the stove, I don't know why I follow the directions, just never cooks. But you can't go wrong with that one. It cooks perfectly every time. Even Peter uses it. When he's home by himself and making himself something to eat, he uses the mini dash. He says it's perfect, and it is. So there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, we are killing it here with recipes. This is the kind of food I like to eat. One and done. It's just how I live, you know? 
It's just easier that way. And honestly, you can make, if you wanted to make another one, I'm telling you, it'll cool down. It's pretty cool now, actually. So we'll probably be ready for, for another go. You can make one for your husband or your family as well. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will dish with you another day. We have a whole week's worth of flatbreads coming. I was going to put it with this video, but I didn't want to make it too long. So I may just make it a separate upload. I could save it for next, I don't know what I do. I could do either just next Sunday to see I have, I might just do that. Have it ready to go next Sunday because I'll be, so the video will go up. That will probably do that. That's hard. It's almost done. I think I have one more to make. I love me flatbreads, you know. Bring flatbreads back. So, I hope you enjoyed. I will dish with you later. Ta-ta. For now. Maybe we'll tackle another dash. Should we tackle an, and any of these you can make in the um I meant to say that in the little um egg bite maker. You can make these all into egg bites. Anything I've made, you can make into egg bites. Why not? It's the steam and that's what makes it so lovely. It steams in there. So it makes everything so I mean look at the height that this got. So so yeah, you definitely utilize your dashes. You can even put it in the, um, I would say the butt maker too. Any of these recipes could probably go in the butt maker. I would, I would try it. So if I would try it, I think you should try it. Like I said, if you have these around, you might make, it might make a couple batches or you might take, you know, because the recipe, recipes might be large because this is pretty deep. You might have to make two or three. So you have these, take them out, dust them off and use them and you will not regret it. So I will talk to you in another video. I need to shut up and end. Bye-bye. Oh, all recipes. I did screenshot all the recipes from the booklet on here, but um, this one is probably just not in there. I will have on dishwithdeed.com.